Technology has unlocked a huge amount of human potential. It's broken down old systems, removed the gatekeepers for entrepreneurs, and has allowed us to stay connected with those closest to us. We no longer have to wait until our 10 year reunion to see how Brian's doing. I'm coming to bat like Grifton in his prime, like Amazon Prime. It's always on time, unless it's late. He's not doing good. But with all the good comes the bad. We're glued to our devices, addicted to technology, often spending over four hours every day on our phones. But instead of simply rejecting technology, I'm interested in how we can bring it into our lives without it negatively affecting our well being. So these are the six effective ways that I've found to reduce screen time in my own life that I think might help you. But first, I've got to keep the lights on. Instead of monetizing my YouTube channel with ads, I've decided to build a membership community at patreon.com slash If you sign up today for $12 a month, you'll get access to 19 videos and eight podcast episodes I've already made with new content coming every month. Learn how I make my videos, get tips on productivity and learn strategies to grow your audience. Try it for a month and help keep this channel independent and ad free. Cancel at any time. All right, back to the video. Okay, so these approaches to reducing the amount of time we spend on our screens gets a little bit more extreme as we go on. So let's start nice and simple. Step number one, track your screen time on your phone and your computer. Most phones have the ability to track the amount of time you spend on your device directly on the phone. You can even get them to send you a report every week with a breakdown of how much time you're spending on it. An app like Rescue Time can help you track the amount of time you spend on your computer. In the same way that platforms like Mint.com can help you to see your unhealthy addiction to in-app purchases on Candy Crush, Rescue Time can be a powerful way to see where your time is going. How much time do you spend on email every day? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, is this really how you wanna be spending your days? It's understandable that you may wanna invest a certain amount of time every day to use social media, but oftentimes I find, at least for myself, that things can quickly get out of hand. Even after you've managed to get your screen time down, you might find yourself occasionally slipping back into old patterns. Having a way to track where your time is going will help you to get clear on your priorities throughout the year. And the second way, turn off all notifications. Notifications are dangerous for a number of reasons. You're constantly getting buzzes or pings on your phone, which get you to compulsively pick it up without even thinking. They're also a shortcut into addictive apps. You get a notification that one of your close friends left a comment on your Instagram post. You open up your phone, planning to simply reply to that one comment and then get back to work. And you do that but you don't stop there. Before you know it, 45 minutes have passed. Multiply that throughout your day, and it's no wonder that we're spending so much time on our devices. So I turn off pretty much all push notifications except for phone calls, text messages, my alarm, and my calendar. And if I'm not expecting a phone call or a text, I'll turn my phone on silent and flip it upside down and put it next to me so I'm not distracted even by the random text message that might come through. Turn your screen to black and white. Turning your phone's screen from color to black and white can have a significant impact on how you use your phone. Opening up your phone, scanning through your apps, using Instagram, all have significantly less power over you. So I don't have an Android device, so I'll explain how to do this on an iPhone, but I'm sure that you can figure out a way to do it on your phone. Go to accessibility, click display accommodations, then color filters, and click grayscale. At the bottom of the accessibility screen, you can create a shortcut by hitting color filters with a triple click, you can turn your black and white screen on and off. So the one problem with actually creating such a quick shortcut is that it's very easy to turn it on and off and you may just find yourself turning the black and white off. Adding a little bit of friction when you're trying to get rid of a bad habit is a really powerful way to make sure you don't fall back into those old patterns. Delete social media from your phone. So one of the best ways to increase the amount of friction it takes to use these apps on your phone is to delete them completely. So last year I did a 30 day social media detox and it completely changed the way I look at social media from a personal perspective, as well as a business owner. I used to think that I needed social media to run my business, but when I quit for 30 days, I saw the largest growth in social media following that I've ever had. Completely ironic, completely unexpected. It might have happened anyway, but the main thing that I got out of it was that people are following me not because I'm active on social media, but because they like the films that I make. So if you're an author or a photographer, you oftentimes don't have to spend three to four hours a day on social media. You can spend three to four hours a day creating and then just 30 minutes, maybe an hour every day posting. 
block distracting websites. Create a schedule blocking some of the most distracting websites that you browse while on your computer, whether it's email, social media, Netflix, or the news. You don't have to be perfect, but if you restrict this amount of time during your work hours, you're likely to be more productive, get more done, and spend less hours in front of the screen. You can use an app like Freedom and set the specific times during the day with which you don't want these sites to be accessible. And the last thing you can do is to create some distance. It's almost taboo in our culture now to leave home without your phone. But if you're going to the gym or taking a trip to the grocery store, think about leaving your phone behind. So my friends Josh and Ryan from The Minimalist do this thing called Screenless Saturdays, and they're really extreme about it. Like legit, we went to a comedy show the other night and they had the address, they knew just about where they were going, but they would refuse to use GPS. They wouldn't even let me and Natalie use our GPS on our phones. So we had to just circle around the block. They often get lost on Saturdays, but I think it's a really fun and creative way to restrict the amount of time we use on our devices, even if just for a day every week. So I believe that technology has helped to make our lives better, but of course there are ways in which it can negatively impact our well-being. By being more mindful about the time we spend in front of our screens, we can be more productive, we can reduce stress, and we can stop feeling like we're always rushing from one thing to the next. If you found additional ways to reduce screen time, let me know in the comments below. Also, I just made a video explaining in more detail the benefits you get by supporting my work on Patreon. You can watch it at patreon.com slash mattdiavella. Thanks for your support, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm spitting with the best of them, spitting my writings like the rest of them. I got my words memorized, so what I'm saying isn't on off the top of my head, but now it is.